Welcome to Jewish Cinematech. I'm Eric Goldman. And uh, this is an opportunity to meet with some of the important faces involved with films that tackle the Jewish experience. On each program, we will interface with writers, directors, and actors who have helped create new cinematic works, some here, some in Israel, and some from across the globe. Today, we meet Gabor Santo, the screenwriter of the new Hungarian film, 1945. Gabor wrote the original story that he and director Ferenc Tark developed into a powerful study of life in Hungary in the immediate post-World War I, World War II period. So Gabor, welcome. Um, Thank you. The film deals with 1945. Uh, the war is over. The Nazis have been kicked out of a Hungarian village, uh, and the Russians are around. Uh, why did you decide to delve into this period? You, uh, a Hungarian Jew, a writer, a poet, a novelist. Why this story? Uh, I always interested in the after effect of the Holocaust. I always interested in the time of the communism uh, and the, our contemporary life uh, from a Jewish viewpoint. Uh, I always felt that several writers and films focused on the time of the Holocaust, time of the discrimination, but my imagination attached to the after effects. Uh, and I was very curious, uh, and I'm very curious, on the contemporary life uh, from a Jewish viewpoint. So when I picked this topic, this uh, uh, particular topic of 1945, I was interested in the situation of the homecoming, homecoming of the survivors, the meeting with the locals, the local villagers, and uh, the effect of their presence, what uh, and how the locals felt at that time when they had to realize there are survivors whom they didn't expect. So this particular period, this particular day, uh, on an August day, when the news came on the atom bomb from Japan, but in a small Hungarian village, another shocking event happened, took place. A this shocking event being? It, it is a shocking event for the locals because two Orthodox Jews appear in a village. They didn't belong to this village. They, nobody knows why they came to this particular village. And the bad conscience, a feeling of guilt start to work in the, in the village among those who, who got the property of the Jews who were deported from the village. So we have two Jews showing up. Nobody recognizes them and they arrive in this village. Um, you just, did you have personal experiences that affected your creating this story? Of course, not a personal experience. I was born in 1966, but my parents uh, were kids in the time of the Holocaust and they were deported to Austrian camps uh, by the Germans and Hungarian authorities. And my grandmothers were there with my parents in, in this Austrian Camps. My grandfather died uh, at the Eastern Front as member of Forced Labor Battalion uh, because the Jews, Jewish men between 18 and 45 years old, they were sent there as forced labor, uh, for forced labor and uh, they were soldiers without arms as a secondary citizens and they disappeared somewhere in just Russia in the Eastern just... Front. So my parents didn't know their parents. Of course it had uh, uh, an impact on my life, on my imagination. And uh, as a sensitive kid, uh, I, I always felt this kind of lack from their lives, from our lives. And I mean, just not me, having grandparents? Just not having grandfathers, having this kind of burden on the memories, having this kind of uh, uh, secrets or, or, or uh, feelings that, that uh, not everyday feelings. So, of course, it had an impact on my writing. It, 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 it uh, had a, a shadow, and I, I later I used this shadow for creating literature, creating novels, creating uh, short stories. So you crafted this story. It begins with a train pulling into this village. And what are these two Orthodox Jewish men bringing with them into the village? 
they, they bring two mysterious boxes, uh, perfumes, if this, this, this is the word, then the other uh, similar words are on, the, are on the paper, on the official paper, uh, and uh, there are, the news uh, starts to spread in the village, they, they want the perfumery shop back, the drogery shop back, which belongs now to the son of the clerk, because the clerk uh, took it from a former friend of him, Polaks, who were sent uh, to Auschwitz. Who were Jews. Who were Jews. And uh, the son uh, sits in the shop, and he has the sense of moral. And, we, and when he heard the news, that two Jews uh, come to the village and maybe they want back the, pr uh, the shop, the, his very first reaction to his father, well, if, if uh, Polacks have descendants, uh, we have to give back the shop. But the father When you didn't say Polacks, that's Polacks, the name of the family. The, the family who's, who owned the, this shop. But the father doesn't want to give it back. So besides this, uh, the, the conflict between the Jews and between the locals, there is another family conflict between the son and the, the father. So it's generational. And, and within Hungary today, do you also see this generational divide between the older generation and the younger generation? Not necessary. The conflicts are uh, in the different type of conflict. So the, this is one conflict of the, uh, the short story, and the film inherits this uh, conflict from, from my original literary piece. And uh, there are other conflicts within the village, because the, the, you know, the, the, the uh, comeback of the Jews, or the surviving of the Jews as a catalysator, helped different kinds of processes, different kinds of conflicts to come up within the context of the village. For instance? Uh, secrets, different kind of secrets came out. Uh, there is a soldier who, who c c came back from Russian war of prisonary, uh, whose former fiance uh, becomes the uh, bride of the son of the clerk. So, and there are different human reactions on the problem that two Jews uh, appear and uh, the maybe the, they have to give back all the Jewish properties. So the human behaviors are very, very, are very colorful uh, within this context. So you're using this pretext of two Jews arriving in town to sort of upset the apple cart, as we sometimes say. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Not, uh, not just the only one conflict uh, uh, in the film, the two Jews. Uh, but they are, have their very own conflict, private life conflicts uh, that come up because now, of this. Now, you're a writer in Hungary today. Uh, you're also the editor uh, of a, uh, of a Jewish, mag magazine. The Jewish magazine, which I, in English I believe is called Sabbath. And called, called Sombat, which means Saturday in English. Okay. And, and what is the situation of the Hungarian Jewish community today? The Hungarian Jewish community uh, started to re revitalize itself in the last two decades, uh, but uh, you know it's a long process. And after the Holocaust and uh, after fo 40 years of communist dictatorship, with its atheism, with its anti-religious uh, thinking, it's quite difficult to to rebuild some kind of Jewish life. Uh, we have a culturally vivid uh, Jewish community. We had festivals, different kinds of uh, cultural activities. But there is much more or less religious revival, and uh, there is uh, the not so deep Jewish knowledge uh, among the Jews. And of course, there is, uh, there is a great lack of the, this kind of knowledge uh, in the Hungarian society. So it's, the, the process has already started, and I hope it will go forward. In an interview you gave a while back, you called yourself the last Hungarian writer. Last Hungarian Jewish writer. Jewish writer. Is it was when I, first, when I first mentioned it a couple of years ago, I mentioned it uh, like a joke. Or, or uh, I felt it uh, humorous. Uh, but later and later, uh, I realized as, uh, it's not a joke. There is no uh, Jewish uh, writer or, or a writer with Jewish topics, explicit Jewish topics uh, among the younger, in the younger generation. Mm, I'm 51, 
and there is no writer uh, who uses these topics uh, among the f uh, writers in their 40s, in their 30s, which, uh, which uh, shows that my formerly humorous uh, reaction statement beca became a sad reality. It is some kind of symbol of the assimilation. If the Jews don't reflect their own uh, situation, their own state of mind, their own problems from a Jewish perspective, it means uh, that, is, that it is the assimilation. And do you see yourself as a champion of, of Jewish culture? I mean, let's face it, it's not easy to take a story and all of a sudden it's an international uh, film hit. Uh, well, it is, uh, of course, it's a, it's a great satisfaction that all those years what I spent writing Jewish stories, writing novels, short stories, and writing this uh, screenplay was not in vain. Of course, it's a great release, it's a great uh, happiness. And uh, uh, I hope it also helps uh, uh, the process of the revitalization of the Jewish uh, culture in Hungary. And I, I hope it helps the dialogue, the communication within the Hungarian society on the dark uh, uh, events of the past. Amazing. And hopefully, as the editor, maybe there'll be some young writers who will see this and say, we'd like to submit a piece for you for I'm publication. Happy to, I'm happy to help younger writers, uh, journalists who want to work in this field uh, to write Jewish topics. And uh, I hope my sad analysis that uh, uh, I'm the last Jewish writer in let's, Hungary. Let's hope that's not the case. Yeah, that's, that's it. Let's go back to the film. So you wrote the story. It was published in 2004. It's 13 years later. So what can you help us a little bit understanding the process and, and how you found director uh, Ferenc Torek and, uh, and began the, the relationship and collaboration? There was a lucky coincidence. We lived in the same street in front of each other. So we, know, we knew each other by face. And when my story uh, came out, I uh, went him to show this story and some other stories. And uh, he, he was very much interested in this particular story. His very first reaction was, well, this is a Western, uh, which was a surprise for me because I wrote a Central European story in 1945, but he realized the structure of the story uh, with the eyes of a, of a director. And it, 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 we worked in a way what he predicted, and we used the tradition, film tradition of Western for creating this European movie. The good guys and the bad guys? No, the, the other, struct, other structural elements, the railway station, uh, the two men with black hair. In this case, not cowboys, but, but Orthodox Jews, but still their presence and the, the, the reaction in the village, it's really uh, remember the audience. For the, for the classical Western so, so, But in classic Westerns, the, the guys who wear the black hats are usually the bad guys. Are you saying the Jews are the bad guys? Uh, they, are mis they are mysterious. That is also a very important factor in the film. There is great uh, mysteries uh, in it. And it also helped to, to keep the su suspense till the end of the film. Wow. We got, several, we got several very good uh, critics all over Europe. We got several prizes in the festivals uh, and we got the very important reaction for example in the Netherlands. We won a prize there, a film and literature prize and we got the, the uh, reaction from the audience. Well this is our stories because survivors uh, came back to Amsterdam in 1945 and they also realized somebody else lived in, lived in their houses. So it's a very European story. It's a very sensitive issue. And uh, sometimes it makes the road very hard because the European societies have to realize they have their very own problems. It's not just uh, a problem of some Dracula world in East Europe, but it's a Western European uh, story too. And specifically in Hungary, I mean, we've seen 
again, across the ocean, we've seen um, the Yobik Party, uh, which is a very far right party, often, uh, often considered like the Iron Cross of today, uh, gain a lot of popularity. I think the last election in 2014, they, they garnered, what, 20% of the No, the less. Vote? They got less. Approximately between 10 and 15%. But uh, is that scary? That it's, uh, in all over Europe, you see uh, the rise of the far right. Because of uh, the people are afraid from mass immigration from Muslim countries, they see the phenomenons of Islamic fundamentalism, which is a quite dangerous phenomenon, and they became, uh, they became closed. They, they tried to uh, protect their own country in a way. That's why several people feel that they have to vote for the far right, which is not uh, the best decision according to my uh, opinion. But you, you need to understand the people uh, for uh, knowing how to handle the phenomenon. Uh, in the last couple of years, you, also re you can also realize that the far right in Europe turned to the center, tried to be uh, more moderate right. in Western Europe. And in the last two years, the Hungarian far right party also uh, turned to the center and tried to behave more normal than in previous years. But we won't, will not forget what they have done in the last 10 years. And, and during the summer, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, on his visit uh, to Hungary, apparently got the Prime Minister to say, we're going to protect our Jews. Uh, we're committed to, uh, to backing our Jewish community. The, si the situation is quite complicated. Uh, uh, the Netanyahu also got criticism uh, for, from Jews because he was very uh, friendly uh, to, to, uh, to Mr. Orban. But you, you, we need to understand that Israel built new uh, type of uh, uh, patriot ship with, with Central European countries because there is a huge uh, leftist anti-Israel uh, wave in Israel, uh, in, in Europe. And as I heard, uh, this phenomenon, this anti-Zionism and anti-Israel uh, phenomenon are very well known in the US too, in university context. Yes, yes. So it is a quite uh, difficult situation because Israel wants to have friends uh, in Europe. That's why they build a uh, different kind of new relationship, for example, with Central European countries, countries we, that, with countries that they have their very own problems. We're going to get back to that in a second. In the meantime, I'd like to uh, have us look at a clip from the film. Uh, this is 1945. Uh, our screenwriter, Gabor Santo, uh, wrote uh, this film, and it was directed uh, by Ferenc uh, Torek. Let's take a look at a clip. Itt van volt az ajtó. Kapogni nem tudsz? Embereknek szóltál? Hm. Nem. Miért jöttél? Vissza kell adni. Mi van? Vissza kell adni mindent. <gül> Elbalondod. Ezeket az embereket pollákék küldték. Ki fog derülni minden? Nyugodj már meg. Honnan beszélt, hogy ezeknek az embereknek bármi közük van a pollákékhoz? Mondni, eredj haza és így el valam. Na, eredjél már. Tudod, hogy ha bármi gond van, mm. akkor én ezt elintézem. Találkozunk a lagzén.
Itt vannak. Hallod? Itt vannak a faluban. Tudom. És? Fiat hősi halált halt a fronton. Van még két másik. Törvényesen utalták ki a házat, nem? És ha a pollákék is visszajönnek? Hányadni már ezt a párikát! Adtak róla papírt. Maga a jegyző. Te meg a jegyződ. Ugyan! Csinálhatsz, amit akarsz. Én nem megyek innen sehova. Se a gyerekek. Hagyd már ezt a pálinkát, már hagyjad már. Nem érted, hogy hagyjad már eleget itt? Ezt... Engedj már el. Ne csak itt légy férfi. So I'm back here with uh, Gabor Santo, the screenwriter for the new film, the new Hungarian film, 1945. What was the reaction in Hungary in light of what you've shared with us mm. about the political situation when this film came out? I mean, in a certain sense, I, I, as I watched it, I said, yeah, okay, so it's these two Jewish men coming into a village, uh, causing problems by their very uh, appearance. but. Maybe that's, you know, also, maybe that's Gabor and Ferenc, these two guys, uh, even though Ferenc is not Jewish, you know, these two troublemakers, why are they bringing up this, going back to 1945, what does that have to do with the year 2017? You know, the, the connection to the past is still difficult in uh, Europe. In, especially in Central European countries where there is, uh, there is an ongoing debate on the uh, responsibility uh, of the local authorities, the, the governments in Central Europe who were in a way uh, in ally, ally uh, with the Germans, with the Nazis in the time of the Second World War. So uh, we, we, we were afraid of the reactions in a way because we made a so very social critical movie. Let me tell you. And uh, surprisingly, the reaction was very positive. The 90% of the media reaction was absolutely uh, pro. Uh, and there just 10% of the reactions uh, were critical toward the, the film, which was a surprise and we felt we we, 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 find, we find something uh, that is important for the audience because somebody has to tell the story for them to help them to realize what, is, uh, what was the situation and it helped them to communicate on the problems. You know, as a member of a second generation from a, with a, within a Holocaust context, I know what does it mean difficulties to talk about the past. And in a way, the whole country uh, is paralyzed because of history. And somebody has to come to, to, to throw a stone into the water, to, to tell something, to shout, and the people can hear it. Yeah, but you know, the question is, I don't think the Hungarian government at this point is prepared to provide restitution for Jews who lost property or art or whatever during the wars. And here you are making trouble. Well, the, there, was, there was restitution, several restitution laws in all over U, uh, Central Europe and in Hungary too. There, there are some ongoing debates, different part of the, the restitution or compensation, but the, the film uh, works on another level, on an intellectual level, and uh, make the people understand what happened, how, and it's very important, how could it happen, what, what, are, what were the details. For example, let me give you an example. There is a very important element of the film, uh, how the people got uh, the Jewish property in the time of the Holocaust in 1944. Uh, they got the Jewish property by discounted auctions. 
which meant that the, deport, the property of the deported Jews were, was, was distributed by the state and by the local government or some part of this uh, property to locals, local villagers, on a very discounted price. Uh -huh. So the state and the local government made the people collaborators. And, as, and there were several uh, very poor people in Hungary, millions. I, it was a very uh, tough decision to t stand against the evil. And just a very, you know, always, always less people can stand against the evil than those who... Unbelievable. Um, and, and I give you so much credit for this. I mean, we've seen some wonderful films coming out of Hungary that deal with the Jewish experience. Uh, we saw Son of Saul, uh, and we see this film, and you are really, um, hopefully not the last person to write Jewish stories or make Jewish movies. I hope so. So I congratulate uh, both you and Ferenz, and uh, uh, I hope that our viewers will have a chance to to see 1945, it's a powerful film. Cinematography is amazing. The use of, of black and white, it is a black and white film, and the shades of gray that, uh, that Friends brings in, and, and the amazing writing, and just, just sometimes looking at the expressions on people's faces. So congratulations to thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you so much for being our guest. Thank you. I'm Eric Goldman with Jewish Cinematech. And we'll see you next time. We would be pleased to send a complimentary DVD of this program to anyone who wishes to support JBS, the Jewish Broadcasting Service, with a tax-deductible gift of $36, double high or more, to the nonprofit organization Jewish Education in Media. Simply visit the JBS homepage and click on the Donate button to make a donation by PayPal or your credit card. And please, indicate the program for which you would like a DVD. Or you can send your tax-deductible check made out to GEM, to GEM, Post Office Box 180, Riverdale Station, Bronx, New York, 10471. And again, please remember to indicate which program you would like to receive with our compliments. And we thank you for your kind support.